Well, we're about to start a second equally exciting session. Um, uh, I'd like to, uh, this, this session is really focused on a new aspect of uh, CIBID that we tr uh, decided to venture upon this year. Uh, and it's actually, as you'll see, turned out very nicely. Uh, our whole focus on innovations, not only for the US healthcare market, but also uh, innovations for uh, large unmet uh, clinical and public health needs for global markets. And this has really been um, possible uh, by the uh, collaboration that we have with Jepago. So I'd like to uh, uh, introduce Dr. Uh, Harshad Sangvi, uh, who is the Vice President and Medical Director of Jepago, an affiliate of Johns Hopkins University. He was uh, formerly the uh, formerly the chair of the Department of uh, Obstetrics and Gyno uh, Gynecology at the University of Nairobi. Uh, currently, he's the Vice President and Medical Director of JPIGO at Johns Hopkins University. He's the main contributor to Managing Complications in Pregnancy and Childbirth, a manual for doctors and midwives, and contributing author in Managing Newborn Problems, two of the Integrated Management of Pregnancy and Childbirth series of manuals published by WHO, now available in 28 languages. He has work experience in over 45 countries. For the last 15 years, he has led the global effort in expanding emergency obstetric care, as well as seeking solutions for preventing postpartum hemorrhage, uh, preeclampsia, and cervical cancer in low resource settings. In 2009, he was the recipient of Global Health Council's Best Practices Award for his pioneering work in preventing postpartum hemorrhage at home birth. So I'd like to welcome Dr. Sangvi to uh, give some remarks on our program. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce some really exciting new projects that promise to transform how we look uh, at uh, the most intractable health problems in developing nations. Uh, the products that you will see have a great potential for preventing the needless death of women and their newborns in some of the most challenging parts of the world. For 35 years, and in almost 150 countries, my organization, Chipaigo, uh, has empowered frontline workers uh, and strengthened the capacity of governments in those countries uh, to provide care for their populations. We do this by taking the latest in science and technology and finding ways to make that science available and accessible down to the community level. And I'd like to take a moment to introduce my team here and Leslie Mancuso, who is our CEO and president. Uh, Leslie, please stand up. And the rest of the Chapaigo team. Could you all stand up, please? These are all advisors to our student teams, and they find time to uh, interact with them in a variety of different ways uh, as global health advisors. Now, maternal and newborn health issues have particularly been hard to impact, despite the fact that many cures are already known. The fact is that we still have half a million women dying each year in developing nations of pregnancy-related causes, and several newborn, million newborns uh, also succumb. And more than 80% of these deaths are in developing nations. The technologies and solutions that were designed for functional healthcare systems, for hospitals, and for well-functioning uh, facilities just do not effectively and efficiently work in health systems that are fragile and uh, marginalized and dysfunctional. And so we have embarked, embarked on creating those technologies that can work in remote and rural uh, settings products that are extremely affordable, and solutions that can be used by non-literate community volunteers because those are the people who can reach everybody, every woman, every child in developing nations. Now, these are simple technologies, but I think I do not need to uh, alert everybody in this room that these simple technologies are not that simple to develop. They are sometimes even more complex than the most complicated technologies to develop. And I absolutely uh, find it amazing that uh, the next few technologies, which I believe have massive potential in saving lives in developing countries, uh, uh, will be working. 
to identify needs through our long and established presence in developing nations, uh, we, 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 have, we, we, we understand some of the challenges of uh, the countries because we've been in present in them for almost 35 years of our history. This year has been particularly fruitful because all 15 of the graduate class spent two weeks in Tanzania, Nepal, and India working to figure out and better understand the needs of those nations so that the solutions that they were developing were very grounded in the realities of the health systems that they were going to work in. I'm also delighted that one of the products of this collaboration, the protein test, is ready for extensive field testing in Nepal this summer. And together with the blood pressure device, this protein test uh, offers uh, an opportunity to detect preeclampsia, a condition that causes many, many deaths, both among mothers and newborns, uh, in some of the most challenged environments of the world. Now, yesterday was Mother's Day, and most of, for most of us here in this room, this was a day of joy and happiness. But for many in developing nations, the day of birth is often a day of mourning, because quite often the baby dies or the mother dies uh, on that day. Now, I can think of no better gift for the mothers in this room here uh, and mothers everywhere than some of the products that you're about to see. Thank you all very much. And so I'll ask the teams to start. Habari, Keribu Sana. Hello and welcome. I, my name is Sherry and I traveled to Tanzania. We'll be giving you a brief background on our global immersions in Tanzania, Nepal, and India. In August, we had the opportunity to travel to developing nations to understand the impact of technological innovations in healthcare. Our mission there was to identify unmet clinical needs in a global context. Our connections were, uh, were made possible by our partner, Japigo. Here's a picture of Mama Shala, Japigo's expert midwife in Tanzania, who took us around to different hospitals, rural and urban, in Tanzania to introduce us to midwives there. Together, uh, we had to describe our mission of identifying unmet clinical needs and explaining what a biomedical engineer was. This was harder than we thought, but eventually we used a lot of the different technological examples, such as a stethoscope or a rapid diagnostic test, to make them understand what types of things that we can together invent. These connections uh, brought about many discussions of design criteria uh, that fulfilled some of the technologies that we will talk to you later about today. Um, overall, we understood that this experience was imperative to the design process, and we understand that there's a huge impact that we can make in developing nations such as these. Here's us with some of the patients on the field um, and also some of the midwives exploring these different opportunities. Now I'll hand it over to Matt, who will talk about his experiences in Nepal. Thanks, Sherry. So hello, namaste. I was one of the five students who uh, went to Kathmandu, Nepal. And while we were there, we spent 11 days in the capital city and we observed an extremely wide breadth of organizations seen here, such as the two uh, teaching hospitals, as well as the Ministry of Health. We've met to discuss urgent needs in the country, as well as, um, as, well as the rural sub-health posts that I'll get to a little bit later. Uh, but so, Time and again, we traveled by rickshaw uh, around the city of Kathmandu, and this was especially important uh, due to the fact that taxi drivers would frequently go on labor strikes. Uh, but one thing that didn't go on strike at all while we were in Nepal was the extremely high level of care exhibited by Nepali healthcare workers. Uh, even when exam rooms were packed wall to wall with people, they just never dropped that smile on their face and they kept going about their everyday day-to-day -day business. So here we are reaching, um, as I alluded to earlier, multiple levels of care. And for the final three days of our trip, we attended the rural district of Chitwan, who, which not only uh, boasts the nation's first national, uh, national park, but it also is home to some of the most remote uh, levels of care in the rural sub-health posts uh, within this district. 
And a final unique portion to our trip to Nepal was that, as Dr. Songvi alluded to earlier, we conducted the early studies of our protein urea field testing, which is part of the larger PEN platform of the antenatal screening kit that we'll be touching on in a few moments. For now, I'll turn it over to Haim to discuss our experiences in India. So I'd like to welcome you to India. And we were welcomed by Mumbai, one of the one of the world's most densely populated cities, and we were able to see how healthcare is done there. So we took in some of the sites and were able to enjoy the city, but then we went straight to business with a visit to J and J India. In, in the office of, offices of Johnson and Johnson, we were able to see how healthcare innovation is done in cost-constrained environments and the way that the real people in the trenches of the medical device innovation are seeing the way that innovate, to innovate and to influence the healthcare landscape in, in these countries. We are also fortunate to go to one of the most uh, densely populated and busiest hospitals in the world, Tata Memorial Hospitals and several other hospitals in Mumbai, and to see the way healthcare is delivered to thousands and hundreds of thousands of uh, people each day. Then we, went, we took the road and we went from Mumbai to Sevagram in the heart of the Maharashtra um, state uh, where we visited the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Medical Science in Sevagram, India, which is the largest rural hospital in the world. Uh, and of course, as you can imagine, rural India was very different than densely populated Mumbai and had different restraints and different uh, constraints for, for design and innovation that we were able to see firsthand. Um, we were able to observe how care is delivered to the villages and we were able to take part in the hospital's activities in the community and take part of that. Um, we were also fortunate to, be, uh, to get all access to the hospital the way they deliver care in the ORs and in the wards to recognize the needs of the, uh, of the clinicians there. But and we have focused, as Dr. Sangvi said, on the maternal and child needs of these environments and the way that we can save mothers and, and infants. One of the most important aspects of this trip was establishing partnerships between us and people on the ground that allowed us to get the design feedback that we need and to establish collaborations for the future. With the help of everyone in Tanzania, Nepal, and India, with the help of Jipaigo and with the help of Johns Hopkins University that has been kind enough to send us there, we have been able to get a lot of feedback and to get three great innovations on the ground that I'm going to introduce now. So these are the three devices that we're going to talk about today. The e-partogram, the antenatal screening kit, and the hypertension detector. These innovations have a great potential to influence the landscape as Dr. Sangvi said, and we're really trying to get an impact on mothers and babies worldwide. I'll go into the e-partogram, how we are empowering midwives to make the right decisions. I'd like to introduce the team, a multidisciplinary team of seven engineers from the master's program, and the eighth member of our team, which has been Japaigo. Japaigo has really been instrumental in letting us uh, innovate and to to give us feedback throughout this process, and they will also be instrumental in bringing this forward. Now let's look at why we're doing this. I'd like everyone to meet Jane. Jane lives in suburban U.S. She's nine months pregnant. When she goes into labor, she'll probably take a car or an ambulance, go on a road like this, and within 15 minutes, she will be at a hospital like this. At the hospital, she will meet a large staff, an obstetrician, a midwife, two nurses, and a lot of technology and supporting staff that will help her deliver her baby. Most importantly, if anything goes wrong with Jane's delivery, she will need 10 minutes to get to the OR and get a C-section, and this will be available to her. With this safe environment to deliver her child, Jane has delivered a six-pound, healthy, happy baby boy and was home the next day. But let's look at a similar story and compare Jane to her counterpart in Africa. Meet Jamila. She's the same age. She lives in rural Africa. She is also nine months pregnant. When she goes into labor, this will be her transport. 
This is the road she will take, and she will take one hour to get to a primary health center and not a hospital. This primary health center will have one midwife with very basic medical supplies, and that midwife will also be taking care of all of these other women at the same time. Another important aspect is that Jamila, if she has any major complications, will take six hours to get to the nearest OR and get a C-section. So let's take a second and look at this disparity. Look at the comparison between Jane and Jamila. And that will help us understand why a woman in a developing country is 30 times more likely to die at birth and nine times more likely to lose her baby. While we can't bring the obstetrician to Jamila at the primary health center and we can't lighten the load from the, for the midwife, what we can do is help the midwife make the right decisions, recognize risk early, and, deliver, and help get Jamila to an, to an obstetrician as fast as possible at any sign of trouble. And there is a tool that does that with the partogram. The partogram is a, is a piece of paper that has predefined charts that help monitor the labor and really recognize risks very early and allows uh, patients to get to an obstetrician as early as possible. This was devel developed over a large uh, period of time by the WHO and it helps midwives make the right decisions and ultimately deliver better care to, to, the, um, to the mothers. Where implemented, the partogram has been very powerful and has lowered maternal mortality by as high as 50%. But there is a problem. This is simply a tool that's not being used. It's only used in 30% of cases, and used, usually, as we've seen in the field, mostly filled out as a record and not as a decision support tool in real time. This means that we have a very effective tool that is not bringing the benefit to mothers simply because it's hard to adopt. And this is the problem that Japago presented to us as we went on our global trips. Go see the way that it's done. Look at that delivery room and tell us what are the problems and how can you help us to solve them. And we've recognized three major problems. First of all, as you can see from the partogram, it's really difficult to fill out. There are a lot of par parameters and uh, it takes a long time to do this for, for one mother let alone 12 mothers at the same time. Second of all, it's time consuming, especially taking the measurements since it requires a specific attention by the midwife to a mother and she can't deal with anything else that's going on in the delivery room. The third problem was the lack of support that midwives got, even if they recognized the risk. They couldn't get the hospitals, the nearby hospitals to support them and they were very frustrated by this and this didn't allow them to give their patients the best care. So the question was, how do we solve these problems in a low-cost environment with a lot of deliveries? And Shaval is going to illustrate that. So to answer these problems, we knew that the part, our solution would need to be easy, time efficient, and would be, have to transfer data from the midwife to a remote location. From our experience in the field, we realized that for this to be a viable solution, we had to make the partogram easy to use and easy to learn and allow the management of multiple patients. In addition, in addition the device has to be low cost and re reusable and durable to be, to be viable in cost constrained environments. We addressed these challenges by developing three modules, an e-partogram device, a sensor module for uterine contractions, and a telemedicine module for transfer of data. Starting with the e-partogram device. The e-partogram device is a handheld device which incorporates the WHO partogram, partogram algorithm. It presents data in the familiar form of the WHO paper partogram, but it also allows the management of multiple patients and easy data input using a cell phone-like keypad. Also, it is, um, also it has light indicators to alert for problems and when measurements need to be taken. This prototype was built in under $150 of commercially available components, which allow a very low manufacturing cost price. 
Next, we have the sensor module. The sensor was designed for the comfort of use of both the midwife and the mother during the labor. It performs automated measurements of uterine contractions through EMG sensing with, with stainless steel electrodes, which are easy to clean and reusable. The, lo the low price of electronics and the single injection mold plastic design allow for this device to be very affordable for cost-constrained environments. Finally, we address the need of the, of the midwife for support through a telemedicine module. The partogram automatically transmits data to a web-based server from which a physician can access through any internet connecting device. This way, the physician can provide support and guidance to the midwife in the field. An addition uh, benefit of this web-based server is that the midwives can access this and get, receive training and continued education in the field without needing to travel to a central location. During the next year, we're going to continue working on this, pro on this project and further develop the prototype using feedback from the field from travels to Africa and India and start field studies in the near future. We would like to thank especially the people from Japaigo, Dr. Harshit Sangvi, Barbara Deller, Brennan Mendel, and Diane Caraggio, who've helped us and answered our questions at almost any time of the night, the staff from CBID who have been very supportive in pushing us forward, and the engineers from Lardell who have helped us forward our design and our engineering process. Thank you.